Hey guys, Sun here. I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. This is episode three of a small series on passwords. The whole series is supported by Trust Token. Uh, I work on their security team. They allowed me to share this with you guys. Um, in last episode, I talked about why entropy or password entropy is very, very important. And I showed you guys how entropy works. We use dice rolls uh, in order to generate entropy and uh, stuff like this. If you haven't watched it, I'll link to it in the description. Uh, in today's episode, we are going to be talking about hardware random number generators. Um, so yeah, in last episode, we used dice rolls. Uh, the cool thing with dice rolls, especially when they're precision, dice or die, there was a whole conversation on which one uh, I should use. Um, well, essentially, it's amazing because dices that are precision made are unbiased. So when you roll the dice, if you roll them randomly, uh, without trying to have a specific number or something like this, while well, the result is truly random. In the context of passwords, passwords should always be truly random. Why? Because humans are really, really bad at generating random data. As soon as we try to think about a password, uh, I'm not sure if your brain works like mine, but we're gonna start using words that are relevant to us or meaningful. Uh, we're gonna start you know, using numbers that are correlated to something in our life. Um, I mean, that's kind of how minds and humans work, I believe. Uh, that's why humans, uh, being aware of this, created hardware random number generators. So computers, uh, as we know, um, especially when we're browsing on the internet, when we're you know connecting to web services, stuff like this, all of this uses encryption, and that's the HTTPS thing that you see in your browsers. That means that the connection between your computer and the server is encrypted. Uh, that is not the same as end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, more on this, perhaps in a future episode. Now, all of this encryption needs encryption keys, and encryption keys are essentially random strings that are generated. So each time we go on a website, that website and our computer will go through a Diffie-Hellman key exchange uh, and that's a process where using public key cryptography, both we're, are gonna agree on a symmetric encryption key. Symmetric encryption keys require both parties to know the key. Hence why we need to generate those randomly. If those keys were to be deterministic, someone could quite easily eavesdrop or you know pull off a man in the middle attack. That is why computers have to be able to generate truly random data. And to that extent, uh, the best way of doing this is using physical phenomenons, uh, as I mentioned here, such as phase drift of ring oscillators. There's a whole bunch of different ways of achieving this. Uh, I link to a Wikipedia article on this. So essentially, computers are trying to simulate, in a way, dice rolls. They're trying to take something that has physical properties that are truly random and extract randomness from this. Now, the process of using a hardware random number generator, by the way, uh, on Apple computers, recent Macs, uh, the Apple T2 chip has its own built-in random number generator. Raspberry Pis have random number generators. I tried to dig more deeply onto this. Um, it's usually proprietary stuff, which means that we don't have access to spec, which I find really sad, but nonetheless, um, most contemporary hardware has built-in hardware number generators, but they're slow. They cannot generate randomness fast enough for everything we're doing because every time one uses our browser, there are a lot of keys being generated. Uh, so yeah, they're slow. That's why we use something called cryptographically secure pseudo random number generators. And those are essentially algorithms that are usually seeded with some truly random data and can then extrapolate off this kind of like an uh, infinite amount of randomness. And that is what is happening in the context of free BSB based operating systems such as macOS, Fortuna is used. And on Linux, it's a different system, it's ChaCha20. But essentially the kernel has it implemented really low level in the operating system and one can actually access it. So uh, in the context of macOS, we can run this little command here. So there is a special device uh, that is actually a virtual device that accesses the kernel pseudo random number generator, and that is slash dev slash random. This here just sets uh, the character set to ASCII, if I believe, uh, if, if this is correct. And then we are using the tr command to essentially just 
uh, you know, get data that is meaningful to us. So data part of this character set here, this is actually escaping, whoops, this is escaping the backslash. Um, and then we're essentially taking eight characters, uh, you know, and then the pipe is broken and we have a password. So this here is like a really low level, nerdy way of generating. And this, by the way, is should be ignored. This is just like the trailing character. So if we run this, we can generate a bunch of truly random passwords, sorry, here. Um, now, password managers will actually do something similar to this. So they are going to use operating system APIs to get access to that pseudo random number generator that is using the hardware random number generator to uh, generate entropy and then extrapolate this and generate random passwords. This is how HTTPS works. This is how one password will actually generate true, truly random passwords for us. Uh, it's actually quite fascinating. So. Without hardware random number generators, computers would be inherently, inherent, inherently, inherent, <laughs> less secure. So we all want those. Um, and in the project that I uh, talked about in a past episode on how to use a Raspberry Pi to create encrypted QR paper backups, while well, we are leveraging that hardware random number generator in the Raspberry Pi. So yeah, I thought I would mention this. It's one of the key pieces of how computers are secure. Um, so yeah, uh, more on passwords in next episode. I hope you're enjoying the series. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, smash that subscribe button and drop a like. This helps the YouTube algorithm more than one would think. Uh, I might be trying actually some more clickbaity titles. Some of you have recommended that. I won't go really deep down into that kind of bullshit layer, uh, but uh, arguably it's true that this channel could grow more if I was a little more uh, strategic and how social media works, but I'm not a huge fan, but nonetheless, this is like this dichotomy in my mind. Woo. Um, okay. By the way, if you have questions, drop them in the comments. Uh, I'll be happy to cover those uh, either in the comments or in future episodes. And this is a good time to mention that, uh, if you guys go on GitHub, so let's go on GitHub or actually, sorry, I'll go here. If we go into the privacy guys reference material and we go into the docs, there's a link to the Privacy Guys repository. By the way, if you have a GitHub account, please, you know, star that. It helps uh, for credibility here. But what I really wanted to mention is discussions. Discussions is a fabulous place for you guys to ask questions. A lot of you write emails to me and I don't have time to answer all of them, unfortunately. Uh, and also there's a whole bunch of really smart people that are part of the Privacy Guides community. So if you have questions, uh, please go on the Privacy Guides discussions. And if you want to contribute to the community and share your knowledge, this is a fabulous place to help each other out as well. So yeah, check it out. I'll see you soon. Bye.